King Bean. I got to get you to do a vid for me then, bro. You already know what it is. You got to do a promo vid for the show so we can get some more people, man. You got a bunch of followers. Have them come over here and watch the show, bro. You already know what it is, man. But um, it's what's up? What's up? Happy Friday, world. I hope everybody's feeling good, feeling great. It is the premier sports betting show, the Primetime Angles, live on IG, hosted by the one and only Pop DiBiase, man. And um, I'm, man. I love Fridays, bro. That's what just, and I'm excited. Even though yesterday wasn't the greatest day, you know, we didn't do great in baseball. Football kind of went to the left for us. We did get the first half and everything like that. And um, pretty much, man, that's what I'm talking about, King Bang. That's what's up. And when we win, don't worry, man. Meet me in Vegas next week. We'll pop some bottles, bro, because I'm. Uh, the plan is to be in Vegas next Sunday, Saturday and Sunday for some business and things like that. So, you know, you already know what it is. Acapulco, Mexico, what's up, y'all? If you're from another country, man, say that you're from that other country, man. Let them know. All right, so um, pretty much um, it is what it is, though, man. It is Friday. This is a money day for us, but it's a moody day. So we got to tread this thing lightly. So I'm going to tell you like this. We don't go crazy on Fridays. We just have ourselves a good time. You know, find the spots, jump into it, and go from there. I suggest you was 10% of the bankroll, but shit, we hit for 40 to 1. So, you know, we got some money to spend, you know what I mean? But we trying to beat the bookie. We ain't trying to give them everything. We ain't trying to give them nothing back. So pretty much, um, you know, because I know those last two days, the bookie, if, if y'all got your bookie, he's sweating right now. He calling you talk about who the hell's giving you these picks. I already know. But um, all in all, last night did not go the way that I wanted it to go. You know, I, I would have been we would have been much better if the Browns would have been able to uh, finish the job and actually play some good defense last night. I also had him on the minus six last night. That was disappointing, bro. They go score a damn touchdown. And everybody knew everybody knows this. When you leave three and a half minutes on the clock, you literally going to give up a, uh, some points on the other end when you're not a good team. And that's exactly what the Browns did. I said, damn, they scored too fast. They had to take their time. Make Cincinnati really call their timeouts and then settle for like a field goal or something with like 30 seconds left to go in the game. These fools want to just run the ball in and, you know, be dominant. But, hey, you know what? They don't get they don't give they don't care about covering spreads or anything of that nature. So it is what it is at the end of the day. And then basketball last night kind of went to the left last night we had boston take care of us in the first half easy first half money we got the under 208 and a half and then we couldn't get boston to go get the team total over and then they broke my premium streak last night as well too we had hit the premium eight days in a row i i think eight to nine days in a row and boston uh shafted that bad boy last night so you know boston it is what it is, and I already know how this series is going to go because everybody, the whole world, going to be on the heat in game three, or they'll be like, oh, it's going to be Boston's revenge. But we're going to see how it looks tomorrow, though, for sure, for sure. But let's talk about what's going on today. And up first, let's go ahead and get into this little Friday night uh, lights uh, football game right here. Um, it's not a big deal. You know, this game is going to be one of those CBS sports games, you know, NBC sports, something of that nature, you know, on a little, on a small channel, on a whatever network. But, you know, we always got to have some action in it. And Campbell last week damn near beat Georgia State. State. So I like this team, man. Campbell is a good FCS school, and um, they'll be out there. They'll be competing. I know Coastal Carolina looks very dominant coming into this game because they beat Kansas. But come on, let's keep it real. Kansas is Kansas. There's JUCOs out there right now that can beat Kansas in the state of Kansas, dog. So come on, man. Let's keep it real. You know what I mean? They don't have – they have college players, but the thing is, though, they don't have good college players. So, you know, Coastal Carolina got themselves a good win last week. Good for them. You know, but – Today's um, a new day, and Campbell already put the the fear in another conference uh, foe that is in, you know, because they're all in the Sun Belt. So pretty much, I'm gonna roll the dice on Campbell tonight with the plus twenty eight and a half. Come on, we already up four touchdowns before we start the game, and we get the hook. Come on, man, it's um, it's almost too good to be true. But I think that you know what, they'll really trick you into let's get jump on Coastal Carolina. They look dominant because they beat up on Kansas. Come on, man. Come on. I know high schools right now that can beat up on Kansas, dog. So it is what it is at the end of the day. Plus 28 and a half. 
Campbell. And then they're going to score in this game as well, too. Coastal Carolina has shown that they can score some points. And um, I think they will be up to it. So I like it. I like it a lot. Over 55 and a half. Campbell, Coastal Carolina. And uh, the plus 28 and a half as well, too. And that's going to wrap up the Friday Night Lights bets. What if we could bet high school games? That, should, that would be fun. Because those games would be like minus 35 to the best team in the state going against like a little little town school or whatever. But um, we move on, and it's time to talk to MLB. And on the MLB today, we got the uh, primetime pick six, 58 to 1 um, up first. We're not jumping into any of those uh, early. I really tried to avoid the double hitter games, but we do have one in, on the next uh, cards uh, for the um, dog pick four. So. Literally, what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the um, over here, over eight and a half. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the. Red Sox plus one and a half right here. And then also going to jump in this Reds game as well. And then one minus one and a half Astros today. They got they owe us money. We got to get that bet back uh, with them today. So we got to see how that one shakes out. But they better do us righteous today, bro. That's all I got to say. So uh, Astros don't win. Don't uh, don't what you call it? Uh, don't don't. All right. So that's cool. Do you think A's fan five one zero? Yeah. Minus one and a half Astros, Cubs money line minus 125, over eight and a half Giants A's. Should we fade that as well, too? You know, which God, it is what it is. But, um, oh, because he's a Yankee fan. It's all good, bro. What you call it? But, see, you you over here, t let me explain to you why we're taking the Red Sox today. Why I'm taking the Red Sox today. Red Sox, this is at Fenway. Red Sox been getting their ass whooped all season. This isn't one of the better pitchers on the Yankees as well, too. So pretty much I'm just rocking with the uh, Red Sox on an insurance play. The Yankees can win all they want to, but just win by one run. But just know one thing, though. When I put this bet out on most occasions, who people who've been following the show, this winds up being a winner. But we're playing this as an insurance play, and we're getting plus 110 on it as well, too. This is about value. So pretty much plus one and a half. Red Sox, there it is. Um, hey, but you know what? It is what it is. The Blue Jays lost, and, it, and we move on. We're not going to go back and forth about it. And um, Tigers, hey, we move on. It is what it is. But um, it is what it is, though. We'll see, we'll see how it shakes out. 58-1 to 1 ticket that we're sitting on right now. Hopefully, you know what, we sweep the board, but sink what you like. We'll get the we'll get some winners home. And it is what it is. We move on. And this is the dog pick four. And this is a dog pick four. This is about value. This isn't about me saying I'm guaranteeing that they're gonna win this win. Okay. So pretty much the pirates, uh yeah, that that's the thing, man. We make money every day. So you can you can you can sit there with the little little things and all that good stuff, but I'm just gonna let you keep talking, bro. Go ahead. Um, Pri Pirates money line game two plus one forty, and um, that's game two today. Pirates, I like the picture in that second game. The first game, eh, I don't know, but Daniel Ponce de Leon, he be getting hit. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Pirates money line game two plus one forty, and then um, we got the Tigers today. Yeah, I'm gonna go bet it back today. The Tigers and um, the Indians. The Indians been a the Indians have been struggling, but they won late yesterday. They got a good win yesterday against the Tigers. And, um, you know, I tip my hat to them and everything with that. But today is a different day. They got a better pitcher on the mound today as well, too. So I think the Tigers hang around a little bit. They make it. They make this game look real good. And hopefully we can go ahead and get us a good little one run or two one two run win and go from there. Tigers plus 195. And then we got the Royals, and I like the Royals today. And I'm going to make the Royals the dog of the day. So pretty much um, I do like where we're going with this one. So Royals money line plus 145. And um, pretty much it is what it is. And um, I like it, man. Plus 145, Royals money line. And then we got the Mariners plus 165 today. Home doggy dog. Let's see what the Mariners can do today. Mariners been good to us this season as well, too, on the dog plays. So pretty much, and I got those numbers for you as well, too. So pretty much, uh, you guys, I'm telling you, just 
you know, if you like the ticket, go ahead and play it. 45 to 1, single what you like. I always say, make sure you do single, though. You don't have to play the parlay. You can single the ones that you like the most, or you can make your own little parlay out the group. But if you do, use all four. Let's go ahead and try to get it home. You already know, pretty much, we've already uh, pretty much won the week on Wednesday. So, hopefully, we can go ahead and get another one home, and then we can just win the weekend as well, too. So, there it is. Uh MLB dog pick 445 to 1 and the pick 6 today is 58 to 1. So let's see how it goes and we move on from there. All right, so uh conference bets list and um this is something if you guys have been following me for years, I've always tweeted these out uh on the Twitter for you guys. So as we are at that moment in time where we do have conference games and so we have four conference games in the ACC we got one in the AAC and then we got four going on in the um then we got four going on in the um Sun Belt so pretty much um where I'm going with this one right here is I like the uh ACC bets list the most today I mean for tomorrow these games are all for tomorrow as well too because it's going to be different tomorrow we kind of got to be moving quickly tomorrow because you know games start pretty early so pretty much we'll be in those later day games and things like that so boston college money line plus 190 like it that's an early game right there that's going to be a good bet because duke looked all right against uh notre dame last week but this is going to be wind up being a very heavy duke bet and duke is going to wind up not showing up in this game because that's how the ACC works. When I see something like a uh, minus six on a team that really kind of doesn't deserve a minus six in a sense, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go the other way, man. So pretty much um, it is what it is. Boston College money line plus 190. And um, hey, it is what it is. And then we got the under 49 and a half Syracuse and Pitt. So um, you know, this is an old school Big East rivalry right here. These teams know each other very well. Every time they hook up, it's a pretty close game. And then it winds up actually always being an NFL type game. Like a, I'm talking about like an NFL type game where you're not scoring a lot of points. So they're not playing in the Carrier Dome this year. They're outdoors in Pittsburgh. So pretty much I think this will wind up being an under 49 and a half for um, in this game, uh, Syracuse, it seems like they, they're not a really great scoring team, but you know, hopefully they don't look too bad on defense like they did in the fourth quarter last week. Cause they had everything held down until about the fourth quarter. So under 49 and a half Syracuse pit, let's see how it shakes out. Then we got the over 64 and a half, uh, Louisville and Miami. All right. So Louisville, is going to be a, a really, really good game for Miami to get into because this one, man, it tells me that we have ourselves, you know, pretty much a top 25 matchup between two teams that wouldn't really be in the top 25 if we had a full slate of teams playing because, you know, the Big Ten takes up about seven of those top 25 spots. So, Pretty much what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the over 64 and a half Louisville, Miami, and it is what it is. And then we have NC State money line. And um, that's going to be that that game right there is tricky. It's going to be 50-50 side. So I can understand if you do uh, go ahead and bet Wake Forest in this game. But I'm taking NC State. They're the home team. They always open up at home very well to in um, the conference. So that's where I'm going with that when I'm taking NC State money line minus 115. And then we got the AAC bets list plus six and a half Navy. Um, I like this one a lot because Tulane really kind of irked me last week, man. I thought they were going to come out and step on uh, that team's chest, and they did not do any of that. They really struggled throughout that whole game, to be uh, very honest with you. So, you know, I wish they could have been better, but they weren't. So it is what it is at the end of the day with them. So we move on, and we and I like, well, you know, Navy – um, BYU is a much better team than Tulane, and we can all say that. I think that, you know, BYU is going to be, uh, you know, a very tremendous team this season. They got an independent schedule as well, too. You know, Navy didn't get in that much practice time either, so now they've got some practice in. They're going against a conference rival. We'll see how it goes, and, um, you know, we'll just depend on some defense in the run game because – Navy ain't a passing school anyway. It's a run. It's a it's a run orientated team. So pretty much, let's see how it shakes out. Plus six and a half. It is what it is. 
All right, so Sun Belt, we're going to go with the um, plus 15 and a half, Georgia State. And um, I like that one, man. I know Lafayette is really good, but Georgia State playing at home, Sun Belt, they always make these games tougher than what they need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and take Georgia State plus 15 and a half. Their first game of the season, hopefully everything works out for them. And then you have the under 64 and a half, Troy, um, going against uh, Middle Tennessee State. And, yeah, I know they rallied, but they had some problems in the game, man. That's all I, I just had said that. It's all good. Under 64 and a half, Troy, Middle Tennessee State. It is what it is, man. Um, this game, Middle Tennessee State didn't show much of an offense when they played against Army. Um, Troy playing in their first game of the season as well, too. I really do like Troy to actually win the game, but I'm going to go ahead and take the under 64 and a half, Troy, and uh, – uh, Middle Tennessee State. And my bad, uh, Middle Tennessee State is not in the Sun Belt. They they should be in the Sun Belt, but they not. Um, so, at the end, we got ourselves Louisiana Monroe. And uh, I'm going to roll with Louisiana Monroe. I like the five and a half that they're pushing out. They're going against Texas State. Texas State was uh, our victim last week for our dog of the uh, week with the... Uh, San Antonio uh, Roadrunners last week, so it is what it is, and um, pretty much, um, you know, minus five and a half, Louisiana Monroe, and um, let's just go from there, and that's the conference bet list for this week, and um, we move on, all right, so now it's time to talk to NBA, and um, yeah, game one, Lakers Nuggets, and um, Lakers coming in as a seven-point favorite tonight. We got an over-under of 211 tonight as well, too. Um, now, the Nuggets coming off of a three straight victories were able to win the series against the um, Clippers and, you know, pretty much was able to, whoever was watching this show and following the following the money trail was able to help us cash out. We What did we do? Three money lines in a row? So, you know, and we believed, but everybody else didn't. So, pretty much... You know, the Clippers, they had to pass the test, get past the second round, and they didn't. So now we get ourselves um, the Lakers and the Nuggets for, I think, the third time in the conference finals. Last time we had this conference finals, the Lakers went on to win the title as well, too, in Orlando. Um, so this has some a little bit of uh, some reasoning to it. So pretty much... Um, this is the series, and I think these are the best two teams in the Western Conference for this season. I know the Clippers were really good, but the Clippers never really had the rapport that they were supposed to. And, you know, the Clippers is a team that had a lot of excuses, man. You know, the Nuggets, they're a team that, you know what, they just said they had to get better. And I think what sparked this whole team was when uh, Porter said that we need to start passing the ball a little bit more and getting other people involved, and he, and then he stepped it up. Right after that as well, too. So he was key in this. Grant Grant was key in this as well, too. But the difference, though, was uh, bringing back um, was the two-point guards. Monty, uh, Monty Morris, uh, hell of a guard. So, you know, Denver, man, and Gary Harris as well, too. Gary Harris really put them over the top. But, you know, Jamal Murray and Jokic, though, bro, those guys are like, psh, they, those guys are nice, man. Those guys are future, future Hall, their future big time stars in the NBA. I don't know about Hall of Fame or anything yet because they still in early in their careers. But if they stick together, they can do some big things in the NBA. And uh, pretty much, man, I like this series, and I think that this series is the best possible series. Um, you know, for the Lakers to get ready for the finals as well, too, and for the Nuggets as well. You know, and uh, I feel like a lot of people felt the Clippers were going to beat the Lakers, but when you see what happened in the Denver series, there was a lot of things the Lakers could have took advantage of in a series against the Clippers. So pretty much, I think that we're probably on the right page. And I told people before we even got to the playoffs that Denver or Utah would be a struggle for the Clippers. But they wouldn't be a, a, a big issue for the Lakers. The Lakers are going to uh, impose their will. Now they can put Dwight Howard back in the game. And um, that's huge. Because, I don't know, JaVale McGee, he's 50-50. He's he, he going to show up when he wants to. But Dwight Howard, though, is a bruiser. He gets the rebounds. He gets the blocks. He makes guys frustrated. That's exactly what you need to do to win games 
against teams like the Nuggets. And that's exactly what happened when they did meet up in the bubble. So let's see how this one goes. Lakers, Nuggets, where are we going with our bets tonight? All right, I'm going to be obvious here. A lot of people already seen it. Uh, now everybody is on the Nuggets wave. I don't like the Lakers. The Nuggets got a big shot in this series. Blase, blase. And they was clowning the Nuggets after game three against the Jazz, talking about that big guy ball doesn't work. That positionless ball doesn't work. Okay, now they're sitting here in the conference finals. So now everybody has got the memo that Denver's a really good team. Now the whole world's on you. Now we got to go the other way. I know seven's a, a lot of points, and I know the Lakers dropped both game to, game ones to start. But did you guys notice, though, in those first two series, I took the other team on the uh, points as well, too. Tonight, I'm not feeling like that. Tonight, I'm feeling like the Lakers, since they had to sit around for a little bit, and they really were able to kind of figure out some things, and the Nuggets being a little tired. Bro, y'all got to understand, this team had to come back from double-digit uh, point totals three four what four times in a row literally the whole series so they put so much out there on the floor so literally what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna take the minus seven on the lakers and it is what it is man at the end of the day so pretty much minus seven lakers and the over 108 Nuggets, Lakers first half as well, too. I feel like this is going to be a high-scoring game, and they literally are handing out free money here for me. And then the first half spread is four and a half. It's so much, bro. You feel what I'm saying? But I do like it as well, too, because, look, this is what happens. The Nuggets start really slow. But the thing is, hey, take the value, A's fan, bro. Go ahead, man. That's what I always say. If you like a dog, then um, then. Play that dog. Shit. If you if you like it, play it. You know what I mean? Because what you're doing is only thing that you're losing is the uh is the uh risk. That's it. You're not you not to juice or nothing. So you put a hundred on a game, you lose a hundred. Instead of putting 170 to get a hundred, you know what I mean? So do what you do, bro. Um but I like the over 108 uh nuggets Lakers first half, and then I like the over 56 and a half Lakers team total first half as well, too. So pretty much it is what it is. And, um, you know, you got to do what you do. So if you like the Lakers tonight, take them. If you like the Nuggets tonight, take them. Because it's game one. And at the end of the day, it's going to be pretty irrelevant when it's all said and done. Because it's all about who wins the fourth game. <laughs> you know what I mean? So pretty much, um, I know, it's cool. It's, it is cool. Because the thing is, he can, the thing is, everybody's uh, always, yeah, I know, but pretty much it is what it is. Now the Lakers is looking at the finals, and that is a, a different story. So we're going to do what we do, and um, we'll move on from there. But uh, pretty much that's my playoff bets for tonight. And um, it is what it is. Minus seven Lakers over 108. Hey, A's fan, I love it, bro. See, you gotta sometimes you got to have somebody up in here with a difference of opinion. It's, it's fine. You know what I mean? It's fine because then the game will do the talking for us. It's a, that's all it is at the end of the day. So minus seven Lakers over 108. Nuggets Lakers first half over 56 and a half Lakers team total. Man, I'm telling you guys right now, I, it's going to be a good day. It's Friday, man. We're going to make some money, man. We got some winners over here. And um, hopefully we... Uh, Cash out some of them parlays as well today, too. So, you know, it is what it is. Friday, keep smiling, man, because life is short. <laughs> Seriously. And, um, you know, they don't want to have us have too many more happy days the way that society is going right now. So you just stay happy, man. Get that money. And it is what it is, bro. So um, that's what we're doing right there. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be signing out because I'm about to get into the races over here at Belmont um over here in um long island new york so if you guys are sticking around for the horse bets i have those for you guys coming up right now but you guys make sure to um tune in to the nfl bet exchange if you guys haven't it's already up on my youtube page and it's also available on periscope i've been retweeting it all day which i'm going to do today as well too and then you guys also um make sure if you are trying to be an exclusive client, you guys can hit me up on the Twitter at PopDBiase or you guys can go ahead and hit me on 
on the client Instagram at um, PTSI on IG, okay? And um, pretty much, man, we got the movement moving. I thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and everything like that today. But you guys make sure um, to keep this thing rolling, all right? So let's go. Let's get this money. And uh, we move on to Belmont real quick. So um, Belmont opening day. And um, up first, we got race four, and that's going to be the um, Miners Make Stakes, and this is an $85,000 race. Uh, they're going a mile and a quarter on the turf, so we're going to go with the French horse by the name of number five, Petite Fells. Petite Fells, the win play show here, nine and two, morning line. Hopefully, that number stands up, and I do have a feeling we'll be able to get this bad boy home. Then we also have the um, race nine allowance race. That's a $65,000 purse right there. And we're going to go ahead and take the eight and a half uh, furlongs on that one as well, too. Key horse is going to be uh, Una Luna. And um, win play show with that one as well. Number four, Una Luna. And then we have the top horses, 4258, Exacted Try, Super. And then we have race 10, Nightcap. 11,000 with the five furlongs and the key horse is number one uh, Noble Mischief and uh, we're going to win play show on this one as well too. One ten nine seven. Those are our top horses. You guys already know what to do. Box, key. I've already pretty much gave you guys a game on how to do that. Then in the late pick four, we're going to go like this. We're going to go five deep in leg one, one, two, seven, eight, twelve. Leg two, we're going to rock with the uh, four, five, six and then in leg three, we're going to go with the uh, four, five, eight, and then we're going to single out the one late. OK, so that's what we're doing here. That's going to be twenty two dollars and fifty cent. I'm just making tickets economical for you because they, you could spend more money on the ticket. This is just an economical ticket because sometimes these pick fours come back and pay like 15 bucks. So pretty much that's just me helping you out. So it is what it is. I thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And um, my phone is actually dying, so I'm about to be real quick. But you guys make sure to follow me on the Twitter at PopDBIC, as I said before. You guys can also go ahead and follow the YouTube page on Prime Wave, uh, Prime Wave Media as well. You know, the movement is moving. We got big things coming as well. But there is no me without you. I thank you guys so much. We uh, did good numbers yesterday on the shows and on all the shows yesterday. And you guys, you know, the support is there. And I know and it's getting bigger by the day. So let's go. Go ahead and win the day, cast these tickets, and man, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time, all right? You guys be good. And this is the Premier Sports Betting Show with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper, and this is the primetime angles live on IG.